Jan Nazuyazui. This is Culture Relay. Welcome to another episode of Culture Relay. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at African Americans. The African Americans are an ethnic group of people who live in, you guess it, America, but are of African descent. Commonly known as Negroes or Black Americans, this group of people would go deep down into hi American history, and I mean deep down. They even become the reason a civil war broke out in America. More on that later. For now, we need to address the elephant in the room. African Americans have been discriminated against since their interaction with white men. For years, they have been segregated, abused, discriminated against, tortured, enslaved, and uh, well, yeah. Look, there is a bunch of discrimination methods used against these guys. African Americans experience this everywhere, from public to households to politics, heck, even entertainment. African Americans have nowhere to run in terms of discrimination. They can't go to school, work, public, pretty much everywhere without becoming the punchline of a white man's joke. And this is not just one thing. Where your friend falls over into a puddle of mud, no. This is a, cent a centurious pro old problem. Thousands of people have died and still are up to this day. Father Nazri, what can we do to stop this? Comment section. I do appreciate your concern for this issue, and you should, as they are part of humanity that we need to protect. But in order to devise a possible solution, we need to take a look at what is done and their impacts. On April 12, 1861, sparked the American Civil War, which lasted till May 9, 1865, a good four years. During this time, America was split into two main bodies, the Confederates, South, and the Union, North. The war was bloody between the two groups, making it the bloodiest war in American history. Eventually, the Union won the war, leaving the Confederates a mess of blood, anger and hatred. Then comes in Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln developed the Emancipation Proclamation of uh, Anticipation and Regulation, in other words with action at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, in all seriousness though, the Emancipation Proclamation was a great movement of civil rights for the African Americans. The Emancipation Proclamation had two main purposes, to abolish slavery in America and give the African Americans their rights. African Americans were finally free. They no longer had a white man yelling at them to do labor and obey orders. They were able to work, raise a family, own property, and a bunch of other rights that were denied due to slavery. They were free men, just like every other man, but not for long. You see, the Emancipation Proclamation, oh man, do I love saying that, only lasted a hundred years. You might be thinking, well, what happened? Or you might not. But regardless, it was these few years that African Americans were still treated unfairly by members of society that cast out. Though they were free from slavery, they still suffered segregation, discrimination, abuse, and a whole list of other things. Public transport was a major issue. Buses allocated seating arrangements for colored and white people with colored at the back and white people at the front. Funny thing that, back in my day, a lot of the students would run off so they could get to the back seat and be the cool guys. Doesn't that mean that the colored people were the cool group? Unfortunately, that wasn't the case in 1955. However, there is a significant event concerning a bus in Montgomery and Rosa Parks. Yes, Rosa Parks was an African-American woman who caught the Montgomery bus home. As the bus ride went on, all the rows for the white section began to fill up, leaving no space for any more white people. As a result, Rosa Parks, along with three others, were told to move to the back seat. The three other people complied, however, Rosa Parks did. Rosa Parks refused to move out of her spot, even when threatened to be arrested. She was arrested and fined $10. Really? $10? That's it? That really isn't a lot of money, you know? Which leads us to our next civil rights activist, Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. is, a, is famous for the I Have a Dream speech made on 28th of August 1963. In it, he references the Emancipation Proclamation and makes statements referring to discrimination and abuse among the Negroes. The speech also explains the unity that African Americans and white Americans need to have in order to reduce violence and discrimination. Martin Luther King was also a pacifist, meaning that he promoted non-violence. His belief that violent methods of achieving African American rights would only lead to further disruption and chaos, helped shape the movements he made and led on an example for others. 
During the time of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X was also another African-American civil rights activist. Unlike Martin Luther King, he focused primarily on self-defense and violence, something he learned whilst growing up. Elijah Muhammad, an African religious leader, influenced Malcolm X during Malcolm's imprisonment. This led to his focus of civil rights towards African-American Muslims, which later changed to all African-Americans after his Hajj journey. These two activists re-established the foundations and the Emancipation Proclamation. 100 years later, when America began to fall back onto discrimination, these were some people that stood up for the civil rights of African Americans. And from these people, we understand that while the law helps with civil rights society in the main problem, if we are ever to change the society of men, we need to take action. Not sit around and watch the news, saying that you support African Americans while you sit back and watch discrimination occur. When silence is heard, life goes on without influence from you. When a new voice is heard, everything stops to take a look at who made it. It is time to make our voices heard, and no, I don't mean protesting. Nothing good ever happens through that. I mean education. While most people hate the idea of studying, it is still the mind that creates power. Through educating people, we are giving them the knowledge and perspective of who the African Americans are. If we don't, stop, if we don't, people will succumb to discrimination and abuse on African Americans. Start small like a child or big like a lecturer. People need to be educated one way or another. Technology, cities, jobs and culture all began with an idea. An idea formed through the education mind.